Hello, YouTube. We're approaching mid-May now in the Halem. And look at how lovely it is, even still. I mean, have you been to the Halem yet? It's really nice here. Keep watching the series of videos and you'll see something other than glorious, beautiful, amazing sunshine. It's not like this every day. But it sure has been nice lately. Let's see what today brings. Welcome everyone to North Coast Pinball. Where I have a few things on my mind today. We're gonna look at Matahari. And we're gonna look at Cyclone. And we're gonna look at Theater of Magic. So, let's take a look at those. But before we do, I have to tell you about my merch and about the thing you do for YouTube content creators, which is to like and subscribe and share and do all the things so that the channel can grow, which I appreciate. And visit northcoastpinball.com for merch like these cool hoodies and hats and fool's boxes and all the stuff. The fool's boxes now are all in sync. They're all doing exactly the same thing all at the same time, except for that one, which I invite you to come and control yourself. Okay, let's work on some pinball machines. Hi. So here's me doing something a little different this week which is that I'm just gonna watch some of this footage. We'll watch it kind of together and I'll comment on it. And uh, this will be how we do the video this week. Would that be okay with you? Say yes, please. Tell me what you think in the comments of these videos. So the first thing we had to work on was Matahari. And I'm a little mortified by how it looks. This was after a cleaning. And you can see there's a lot of paint missing. And I'm trying to like organize my thoughts around the idea that the purpose of this machine and all the machines is to bring us delight. And probably there's more that I could be doing and more that I should be doing to protect this wood from the daily rigors of being played. And I do intend to wax this play field more often. But here, let me show you a, uh, a picture from like a year ago of what it looked like. And here's what it looks like now. And it's not great, but um, if it gets bad enough, there is something called a hard top that I can buy for this game. But I'm inclined to do my best with wax I'm not inclined to use Mylar, but I am inclined to wax this more often in order to just see if we can slow down the loss of paint. I'm not inclined to try to clear coat the game because I just, I don't want to go there. And if we're going to clear coat it, we may as well just put a hard top on it. So um, we're going to play it like this for another year, two years, three years until the paint is so bad that I finally decide, okay, it's hard top time, but it's not hard top time yet. So after a while it's waxed. And after a while after that, it's still waxed. And you can see all this bare wood and that's just the way it goes. So we play the game a little bit. I had a nice ball actually. We'll just let this play for a little while. Matahari is a special game for all kinds of reasons.
And then we moved on to Cyclone, where we had a fairly simple problem of a loose piece of plastic. And all we had to do for that was to put a new screw in there with a lock washer. And that's it. <clears throat> do you see this plastic here? Um, the plastic over the slingshot is something that frequently breaks uh, because the ball strikes it. So what we do is we put these little Lexan washers under the plastic. And um, I had meant to do that earlier, and so now I've finally done that. And you can see the light shining through that shows where the Lexan washer is. And you can also see some burned out light bulbs, which I'm going to fix a different day. Oh, look, there's another cyclone on the wall. And here's a little bit of Cyclone gameplay. Cyclone only has one ball, so without multi-ball, it's a little harder to get really exciting, interesting footage. Capture a little bit of slow-mo. You may have seen the slow-mo that I put on the screen. Just play it until something interesting happens. something interesting to happen if there's no multi-ball. This might be the most boring pinball footage I've ever shot. That And then we moved on to Theater of Magic. And the symptom at Theater of Magic was that the trunk was not moving properly. And occasionally the ball would get stuck up behind the magic trunk, which is the thing you hit for multi-ball. And what I discovered while I was poking at it, you know, I put the game into switch test mode, uh, switch edges in particular. And then I put my hand on the this little plastic thing. And this plastic thing is a sort of collar that um, works the optos. But first, I'm just poking at this wire just to see, like, is there something loose there? But, oh, okay. So when I, when I move that piece of plastic, we get that switch closing. And the switch is actually an opto that um, shines light through a slot in this plastic piece. So my first thought was, let's tighten up the screw that affixes this plastic collar with the slot in it for the light to pass through. And now it's nice and tight, except we see that it's cracked. And we also see that somebody before me has um, tried to glue it. And that repair job was not successful. So we're going to try again. Mix up a little bit of epoxy. And this is about four times more epoxy than we needed, which is fine. And I'm gonna put some of this epoxy into the slot that was made when this piece of plastic fractured. And I have a feeling that the person who did this repair before me didn't put epoxy into this piece of plastic while it was tightened and under tension. So that may be one thing that's different. Uh, about this attempt at a repair. And maybe they didn't use epoxy or they used something else. I don't know what they used. But we goop some of this epoxy into the crack. And we'll let it set for a while. The cool thing about using epoxy is that the epoxy that you don't use, you can monitor that so that you don't mess with the work until it's hardened. And then the next day, it's nice and hard and it's not tacky. And if we look at this repair job, I'm kind of pleased with it.
it looks gross and I can replace this probably I haven't checked, but, uh, I'll look for a replacement part and show it to you in post-production if it exists. So now let's play some theater of magic. Let's play a little bit of this
we have gameplay. So that's what I did to fix pinball machines this week. Uh, oh, also, I got to fly kites a little bit. So here's just a little bit of footage from my friend Wynn, who encountered me on the beach flying my newish prism synthesis. Who's that? Who's that kite expert? All things relative. And today's tidbit is that I'm doing the videos in a slightly different way, partly because I was having trouble feeling the energy and motivation to do another one of these videos. So by the way, if you're still here, let me know if you appreciate these videos and if you like them and if you'd like to see more of a specific kind of thing, make sure you let me know. But we're trying a slightly different production process this way. Uh, and uh, as I record this outro, I haven't done any of the things that you've already seen. So you're a time traveler now, but enough of that. What I say now is, Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for being part of North Coast Pinball. And make sure to come and visit Nehalem, where it is still sunny and beautiful. Thank you, YouTube. See y'all later.